Howdy folks, time for another update on the Pip-Boy 3000 Mark IV interface. Uh, so last time I had waveforms that I was showing that are were cached. Uh, I had a commenter ask if I could make it look a little more like an oscilloscope, which basically just actually means zooming in on the waveform so that it's a, a shorter clip of time. And uh, once I did that, I kind of looked at the code and uh, optimized it. So now it takes a fraction of a second to load the waveform, uh, which is now running in its own thread so that the music can start playing as soon as it's loaded. And if the waveform lags a little bit behind, it will uh, still show up. Uh, doesn't have any issue on here, but on the Raspberry Pi, it might take a second or so. Um, the cool part about this now is that the audio is also played perfectly in sync, so that uh, with the waveform, uh, basically I just track the where the audio position is and expand that to the uh, to its position inside the waveform data, and then display the right little chunk of it. Um, and then you can change the amount of zoom in the settings file if you want this to be uh, show the entire waveform or if you want this to be more zoomed in. The other cool thing that I have working now is also a hacking screen. Uh, so similar to the interfaces you get inside the terminal where you got uh, different uh, words you got to kind of pick and I got a cheat code up there so I know which one is which. Uh, I can type in the password and it'll go to the boot screen. Uh, the cool part about this is it also still has the kind of dud removal. Uh, see if I can find one here. Uh, where's one? Am I blind? There's one. So you got the dud removal, the try reset. Um, so the credit for this code goes to Mr. Volt. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel that I'll link to below where he's making a functional Gladys from the Portal game series, uh, very much in line with what I'm doing with, with the Pip-Boy, where he's got, uh, he's actually got animatronics and a screen and voice and, and all sorts of cool stuff going along with that. Uh, so I guess when he was back at Element 14's YouTube channel, he had made a, uh, a kind of desk size little uh, terminal that you get from the game, and he made this to go along with it to kind of act as a little lock screen. Uh, wrote the code in Python, but I had to uh, do quite a bit of work to get this ported over to something that was compatible with Pi game. Uh, but this works now, and if you uh, hit the wrong password too many times, it will still do the kind of lockout. Um, put that music down here. There we go. The other cool thing I have working now also is holotapes. Um, so I wanted a way to have holotapes the way they work in the game where they're in your inventory. Um, I'll actually have some physical holotapes that go along with this that will allow these kind of screens to pop up. Uh, but these are the virtual holotapes that uh, you can kind of have as your inventory. So these will actually have either audio or text or even multimedia uh, in here. So it crawls across the screen just like it does in game. And then you can play a tape. So, I of course reuse the waveform generator for this. Jump back. Uh, you can also have text hall tapes. These are some of the hall tapes that are in game. So, like, this is one that was a text log. And this text crawl running across the screen was actually not uh, very easy to get working. I have to basically draw one character at a time while having the console, the uh, cursor kind of follow it and then erase the cursor on the next line or when it jumps to the next line. Uh, so I ended up using the cons the kind of terminal interface that, I u that is used for the hacking screen uh, to generate these screens. The nice part is that it has the console or cursor that allows me to do this kind of highlighting and tracking I can even pull the data text that are in those lines off of there. Uh, so it's like one of the hull tapes from the game. <laughs> no, no, no. no fingers away. Uh, and then I generated this little test system. So the cool part is that all of these are generated off of a single XML file. And so you basically just make a folder, an XML file, and then you can dump in audio files in there with, their too, with it too. 
Uh, so I made this little test one so I can have multiple audio files. It can jump from like say page two here, it can jump into page six. So you can see how you can get into multiple uh, menus in different in under different levels. So like this Bradford station has like this little spotlight control or Bedford station. And then this one even has an audio hollow tape that went with it. She's late. No. So getting this all working is something that took quite a few days. Uh, lots of tries to get working. Uh, there's a little bit couple tweaks I want to get there. Uh, right now the word wrapping doesn't work quite so well. It wraps on the letters instead of on the words. Uh, but that's something I can work on for later. But now you can have the hollow tapes. Uh, it even pulls in, if you see here down at the bottom right, the actual type of hollow tape, and that's pulled in out of the XML file when this menu is generated. Still lots more to go to get a couple more of these screens working, the apparel screen working, um, and then some of the uh, like status screens. Um, so, more to come. Thanks for watching.